In the first part of this trilogy, we looked at the basic things of Nina. How to install it, how to set it up, how to connect the equipment, how to change some settings, and how to do some basic shooting. Now in the second part, we look at sequencing. Hey, this is View Into Space, I'm Sascha from Switzerland, so grüß Sie miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So what do we know a sequencer was known until a few months ago as the advanced sequencer. But what is a sequencer? A sequencer is an automation tool because that's really what we want from Nina. We do not want to care about all the nitty gritty stuff which has to be done. We want to let Nina do that and go peacefully to watch TV or sleep or anything else that's more interesting that's standing freezing beside your telescope. And while the sequencer might look a little bit complex at the very start, I will guide you now through it and at the end of the video it will not be that scary anymore. And after a few times practicing it will be daily routine. Let's jump now right in the PC and let's have a look in Nina. So welcome to Nina again. So let's assume we have already connected all of our equipment. The next thing we do we go to Sky Atlas and we want to look for something. We want to shoot something and this night we want to shoot the Pleiades. So we enter here M45, we search for it and here it is. So we see that's actually wonderful. It's right on Zenith at the moment. Let's ignore that it's daylight. So we say set for framing assistance. And here it is, the play of these. So it fits wonderful in my 400 millimeter scope. You can still move it a little bit around. And yeah, that looks great. Let's do it like this. So now that I have it actually framed the way that I want, I go here, add target to sequence, and I have now two options. Either I can say add target to sequence, or I can say add target to target list. So let's first of all move it to a target list. I can then state of which sequence, and we will look at that in a second. So I'll put it now there. So I can now go and actually look for something else. Let's say I also want to look for Orion. Also here, framing assistant, and here we have Orion. This I think actually looks better if I do it vertically. So let's move it around. Great. And I do the same again at the target list. Move it to my sequence. We will see in a second how we do sequences, and it's done. Now let's remember that we have done that, and we leave that at the moment as it is. And now we go here in sequencer. So in the sequencer. We have actually instructions, we have templates, and we have targets. And when we go to targets, what do you see? M42 and M45. So the two which we just entered now, right where we want it, already framed. So these are our targets. And so we can store all the targets that we actually want to shoot at one point of time, the way framed that we want to shoot them, already here, so we have them ready. Now when it comes to sequences, we could start now from scratch. But you know, it's a little bit like with everything. Why reinvent the wheel? So also I did not start from scratch. I took some templates from Patriot Astro actually. You still see them here. But then I also modified them to my taste. And what I will provide now to you is a quite altered template that I feel is the most efficient. But it's also most efficient for my case again, it might be very different from you. And so definitely also go to Patriot Astro. He has really a lot of different templates that you can actually use. But we take now the template that I will also provide to you. And let's throw this now in here, just drag and drop. And as stated at the beginning, this looks now extremely complex and confusing. And what we're doing now, we go step by step through the script. And you will see that it's not that confusing at all. And also very easy to modify. So the first thing you have to know, if you want to delete this template again, you go on the very top to this trash bin. If I click it, the whole thing is gone again. 
if you modify anything on this script, we're not talking about the object, we just talk about anything else. If you modify anything, just click here on this button on the floppy disk and it saves it. And before we go any further, you might have one question, rightfully so. How do I actually get these templates to appear here? Good question. Let's jump over to options and in options to imaging. And you see here sequence. And on the second line here, you see sequence templates folder. That's a folder that's already there by default. You could change it, but on the other side, you can also leave it exactly where it is. So just find this folder on your hard drive and throw the template that you download either from Patriot Astro or from me and just throw it in here. And as soon as you have done that, you will find it in the sequencer on the templates here and you can use it. And so also every time you save a template, for example, a version from what you have done, it will simply go in here and also be in the folder that I just shown you. So let's go back. So we have our template. You know now how to close it, how to save it. So the next thing you will see is a lot of these red marks here. And what they state is that whatever should be used here is not connected, which is quite obvious because I'm not outside. So for example, my telescope, my camera is at the moment not connected. And that's very helpful because once you configured it, you need and there might be things you don't even have like for example a filter wheel so these you will all delete but at the end when you have your template with your equipment if you actually go in the template to fill it in for the night and you see any of these red signs still appearing it means something you have forgotten to connect it's a very good sign to still connect it until every least one of these is disappeared so a sequence is actually read from the top to the bottom. So we start at the very top and the very top actually gives us the object, the target that we want to shoot. At the moment, there's nothing in there. And we can now go to these targets, which we saved before. And we can, for example, say we want to play these and 45. We take it and throw it in here and it's in here. Now it will shoot the Pleiades. If we change our mind, we want to shoot Orion. We take this, drag and drop. Now it's Orion. So whatever is up here is the one thing that will be shot. There is, by the way, another way to do that. If we go back now to the framing assistance where we have been, remember here Orion, I can also say here add target to sequence. If I click that, and I say sequencer, I can choose here from all the templates that I have, I click on it, automatically this template will be opened and you go into the sequencer and you have exactly the same picture as you have right now. So now let's go down and you see now that we have certain blocks. They always start with a header. For example, here it says equipment ready. So what we do in this block is get the equipment ready. And then there are three groups. The first one is triggers. And the trigger where we don't have here one is something that has to happen that it triggers something. For example, if temperature goes down, an autofocus is triggered. Next is loop conditions. If you want to loop something that it happens again and again and again, we stayed here until when this should loop. For example, until a certain time or until the moon gets up and so on. Also, we don't need that here. And then next come the instructions. So let's now see what we instruct our rig to do. First of all, we tell it to wait. Wait until 40 minutes before astronomical dusk. So then, it's, then we start with the preparation. Then please unpark the scope. Then set the tracking to side rail. Then cool the camera to minus 10 degrees Celsius. Once this is done, put the doheater at the camera on. Switch the filter in the filter wheel to an Optolong L Pro so that we're definitely not on a narrow band filter for plate solving. And then do a plate solve and sync it with the scope. And then our first box 
is complete. Now you might say, um, fine Sasha, but I don't have a filter wheel. No problem. You go to this line here and you see the trash bin, just throw it in the trash, gone. Your camera doesn't have a do heater, no problem, gone. And now I just show you how to delete things, but afterwards I also show you how to add things. Okay, so then we have here a wait time again. So when, it, when this is completed, the rig has to wait again until we are 20 minutes before astronomical dusk. Then we go on with the preparation of the target. So we ask now the rig to slew to the target based on the target we entered on top of here and center on it. So we will now slew, plate solve and ensure that it's within the tolerance that we already given. Once this is done, we ask that the guiding is started. We can also say if a calibration has to be done each time and that's in principle, if you leave your guide scope alone, it's not needed. You only need to do it the first time. And then we ask it to do an autofocus. Again, if you have an electronic autofocuser, otherwise you know how to delete it. Once it's all done, we are centered on the target, we are guiding, we are in focus, so we're actually ready in principle to shoot, but it's not dark yet. So we wait until it's about 10 minutes before astronomical dusk, and that's now the time when we're ready to shoot. And now comes our shooting sequence here. And now here you see a lot of triggers and also some loops. So what do we state here in the triggers? We state that please autofocus after an HFR increase. So if the stars get bigger by an amount of 10%, then please autofocus again, because that might be one of the reasons why we have a bigger HFR. Also, please autofocus after a temperature change. Every time the temperature changes by two degrees, it autofocuses. Then we also tell it to center after drift. So this will be evaluated after each exposure. And if the drift is bigger than two arc minutes, it reslews so that we're always exactly at the same place. And if there's anything that stops the guiding, like the reslewing and so on, we state restore the guiding before we start shooting. So these are all the triggers. Now there's a loop. We state, please shoot, continue shooting until it's nautical dawn, because then it's not dark anymore. So please stop shooting. And now finally, finally, we are ready to shoot. And what I give you in my template are three shooting sequences if you have different filters or want different exposures. But again, if you do not need all three, you can delete them. Now there's only two. So in each line, we state now what we want. And this is every time obviously different. So for example, here, we state we want to have 50 pictures by 60 seconds. These are lights. We leave the binning at one. Gain and offset is already entered by the camera settings. Filter, if you have a filter wheel, you can choose it now. For example, for this, I use the Antleo. And you want to dither every, for example, two exposures. Afterwards, I want to have another 50 pictures, also 60 seconds, but this time with the color magic filter. Again, I dither every two time, and that's it. So what's going to happen now? It starts shooting after each photo it takes, it goes up here, did the HFR change, did the temperature change, did we have a drift, and if it has, it autofocuses or it resluce, and then it continues. Every second photo, it dithers. Once it has done the 50 pictures here, it goes down, does the 50 picture with the other filter, and now you know what happens, there's a loop. So if there's still enough time, it goes up again here, starts to shoot again with the Antlia, then with the color magic and so on. And it does this loop until there's nautical dawn. And once nautical dawn comes, it jumps down here. Then we say, please stop guiding now, park the scope. Now, as I have an Eagle 5, I can also say it to stop the dew heater. Then it warms the camera up. And once the camera is warmed up, I also switch off the energy to the camera to save electricity, 
to save the camera. And then my sequence is done and nothing is happening anymore. So that is a whole sequence. And as you can see, it's not that difficult, especially when you already have such a template. Now, but what if you want to add something? For that, we go to instructions. And you will see there's a lot of instruction. And actually, there's even more. If you go up here on this icon, you see some icons that are red. And these I actually deactivated. So you can go down and you can say, oh, I don't have a dome, for example, because I don't have a dome. So you just click on them that they're red and they will not appear. So you only leave the one which have some relevance to you. Everything else you just cross out. And at the end, you click here on the icon again. And so you really only work with the stuff that you want to work with. Now, for example, you say, well, actually, right after the autofocus here, I want to already take one exposure. So just as a test exposure, then I see how it will look like. So we can actually go here, say take exposure by the camera, and I just take it and drag and drop, throw it in here. Say time, it's also 60 seconds, and that's done. Another example, you might have a mount where you need to do a meridian flip. So you go here to telescope, you see here meridian flip, it's this arrow, which means it's a trigger. And I just throw it here by the triggers. And so it will be done when it's actually needed. When and how to do a meridian flip, you already defined in the settings. And there are also easier things, for example, here loop until time. Instead of nautical dawn, you can also say sunset. Or you can simply enter a time. Sometimes I do that if, for example, I only want to shoot one object and at one point this actually is too low to shoot. Then I just enter here the number until two o'clock in the morning, for example. Now it shoots until then. So I really encourage you to play around with this and really look at them. It, this is not a program language. This is really all clear text. And even there are a lot of things you can actually change. It all makes pretty much sense. If not, you see there's some help text which explains it to you. And so you will get the hang of it pretty fast. Now you might have the question, so what if I want to shoot two targets in one night? You can actually use more than one of these sequences. So you go all down. I go back to templates, take my default again, and I just throw it below. Now here I would now enter target. I would argue, I would enter another target. And there's obviously now a few modifications which you have to do. Mostly that you would actually delete here in the first sequence all the end part. Gone. There's also a few things in the second one which you do not have to do anymore. The wait time, on park, all this stuff, the whole equipment, you can actually delete that. But once you have done that, Everything's fine. So loop until time. So you state now by time until when it actually should loop for this first object. And as soon as it's finished here, it goes down into the second sequence and starts to shoot there. And so you can do that with as many objects in one night as you want to. So I hope you agree that it's not that difficult. And from now on, your computer will do the work and you will enjoy the safe time. The template that I mentioned is available in the link below. And if you feel it's helpful and you want to support the channel, please also have a look in the description below. There's a link to my Patreon channel. You also get a lot of additional workflows and cheat sheets for the price of a coffee. See you next time and clear skies.